President Trump's attempted coup keeps getting dumber and more desperate. Today, his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, had a meltdown live on television as Trump tried to overturn the will of the voters in Michigan. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Let's start with some good news because God knows we need it. For the last few weeks, I've been popping Ativan like they're Altoids, although in fairness, they shouldn't sell them in similar looking tins. Early data suggests we may have not one, but two highly effective coronavirus vaccines. And in particular, Pfizer says they're ready to ask the FDA for emergency use authorization within days. Meanwhile, today, Oxford and AstraZeneca reported that their vaccine has generated a strong immune response in older adults. Honestly, I'm so ready for this vaccine. I've been showing up to my local CVS in a tank top waiting for a shot in my arm. My pharmacist told me, you look like late night writer Mike Scollins. <laughs> yeah, this burn also is going to have multiple waves, Scollins. <laughs> anyway, doctors and public health officials who've been extremely cautious throughout this entire pandemic are starting to tell us there really are glimmers of hope. We just have to pull together and get through what will undoubtedly be a brutal winner. The end is actually in sight with these two promising vaccines. We just have to get through this winter. We can do it. We can put off celebrating Thanksgiving in person. Let's have Thanksgiving in July. Great. I love that idea. Thanksgiving sucks where it is now. It's too close to Christmas. We don't need back-to-back -back holidays where we go home and sleep on a twin bed after mainlining gravy. Move it to July, and we can stuff a bird full of bottle rockets and launch it straight into the sky, a.k.a. fire turks. The writer of this piece, Sal Gentile, wanted me to stress that Fire Turks was not in his original draft and that I added it after the fact, and I don't care. I'll own it. However, Sal did write that Scollins burned, and he wasn't even in the original Zoom meeting when Scollins wore the tank top. That's how ridiculous you look, Mike. He heard it secondhand, and he's burning you. Anyway, we can combine the traditions of both holidays into one. Gravy on our hot dogs, cranberries on our hamburgers, and instead of football, we can fall asleep on the couch watching the Detroit Lions lose at Wimbledon. I'm sorry, why is it the Lions every year? Because tradition. We just need to get through this bleak winter. But we also need a plan for rolling out a potential vaccine. We're supposed to be in the middle of a presidential transition right now, which means we need the incoming and outgoing administrations to cooperate on developing a plan to distribute the vaccine, which Biden has called for. Getting the vaccine and a vaccination, though, are two different things. Everyone on our call today, in our Zoom today, agreed that the sooner we have access to the administration's distribution plan, the sooner this transition would be smoothly moved forward. Ah, Joe Biden, it's like the human sounds of the rainforest CD. Just hearing a president-elect speak in direct, coherent terms about his plans for, you know, solving things is reassuring. Although Joe Biden could think vaccine is the name of that lady from the Hallmark cards, and I'd still just be glad that I don't have to listen to President Trump ever again. <laughs> This is a funny one. How about instead of a shot in the arm, I give you a shot in the ass? Maxine! Max, <laughs> when will it stop, Maxine? And yet Donald Trump is still moping around the White House, pretending he has a path to victory by, for example, overturning the results in Michigan. Trump tried to steal Michigan in part by undermining the routine process of certifying election results in Wayne County, Michigan, which he lost and not coincidentally includes Detroit. In fact, we learned today he even went so far as to personally call two local Republican canvassers in Wayne County, who then tried to rescind their votes to certify the results. Two members of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers suddenly changed course. Yes, a pair of Republicans trying to reverse course after certifying the results from the presidential election. The very latest is that the two Republican members of the Board of Canvassers, they are now asking for their votes to be rescinded from earlier in the week. And we are now learning that President Donald Trump actually called both of them following that controversial meeting. So now Trump is trying to interfere with local county election boards. What's next? Is he going to start individually tracking down the old ladies at the polling stations who give you the I voted sticker? I never got a sticker. That's fraud. I win. Now give me that quilt, you old bag. Also, this means someone at the White House actually had to sift through Google or shuffle through an old Rolodex to find the phone numbers of two local election canvassers in Wayne County, Michigan. You know how much time that probably took? Just to find this story about Trump calling the canvassers. I had to Google Trump Wayne and gave me a bunch of articles about Lil Wayne supporting Trump. So then I typed Wayne Trump into Google again and 
One of the suggested searches was Wayne Trumpet, so I clicked on that and found a Wikipedia article about a jazz musician named Wayne Bergeron who plays the trumpet, so I started reading it because I personally always thought if I hadn't gone into comedy, I could have become a jazz musician. And then I remember what I was supposed to be doing and Google Trump calls Wayne County Board of Canvassers. The point is, this stupid coup is taking a long time. And then there's the fact that Trump is attempting to overturn tens of thousands of ballots in Georgia and Arizona and sending Rudy Giuliani to Pennsylvania to embarrass himself in federal court. It's funny, but when Rudy shows up in court, even via conference call, everyone must immediately think it's a hidden camera prank. When you think about it, in every case but one this year, Rudy was the Borat. Rudy and the Trump team made a series of court filings yesterday in which they asked, and this is real, to disenfranchise up to 1.5 million voters. They told the court that ultimately, plaintiffs will seek the remedy of Trump being declared the winner of the legal votes cast in the Pennsylvania 2020 general election, and thus, the recipient of Pennsylvania's electors. Okay, sure, then I'm filing a motion in court to seek the remedy that Seth Meyers be named people, magazine's sexiest man alive, and to my publicist, no, I don't think Smug Weekly's mug of the month is just as good. Anyway, Rudy and his legal team, which includes a radio show host, are not just asking for millions of voters to be disenfranchised, they're also asking, and again, this is real, to be allowed to count the ballots themselves. And by the way, I'm using legal teams so loosely here. Anyway, Rudy's psycho plan, as far as I can tell, is to count a sample of the ballots, and then if they can find enough supposed fraud, which doesn't exist, they will then extrapolate that to all of the ballots and declare Trump the winner. According to the very real and insane court filing, plaintiffs will examine these envelopes to determine the percentage of mail ballots which were illegally counted. Plaintiffs, through statistical expert analysis, will then extrapolate this percent to the 1.5 million mail ballots. This simple exercise will determine whether plaintiffs can prove their case that sufficient illegal ballots were counted that changed the result of the election. If so, the court should set aside the votes and declare Trump the winner. I love the part where they say they'll extrapolate through statistical expert analysis. I'm guessing what they mean is Rudy's going to be sitting in a room with an 80s Casio printing calculator and a stack of ballots trying to figure out how to do higher order math. What? I didn't know Square had roots. Also, I'm glad they took time to say that part of their petition is to prove the plaintiff's case, which without exception has been the goal of the plaintiff in every single lawsuit ever since like caveman court. You never heard a lawyer say, your honor, we'd like to prove the case one way or the other. You decide. We have no skin in the game. Even Trump's closest allies like his former chief of staff Mick Mulvaney have expressed concern about Rudy's embarrassing performances in court. Um, I, I still am a little concerned about the use of Rudy Giuliani. They're not using the most uh, well-noted election lawyers. There are folks who use, who do this all of the time. Yeah, and none of them want to be a part of this harebrained scheme. You don't end up with Rudy when you have other options. The raft and castaway wasn't Tom Hanks' first choice of boat. It was his only choice. Trump chose Rudy the way you choose a dentist who's in your insurance plans network. Well, this guy's only open on Tuesday, but this other guy works out of a barge on the East River. Then I knew I shouldn't have gotten dental insurance from the general general. Anyway, while what we here at Late Night have been calling the kooky cuckoo cuckoo crew is wasting everyone's time, there's still, you know, a raging pandemic going on, and the people calling up random election officials in Wayne County to overturn legitimate election results are the ones who are supposed to be protecting Americans from a deadly disease. It's like every building is on fire, and the fire department won't put the fires out because they're in court demanding, A, they never have to retire, and B, from now on, we call them the party boys. Yesterday, they were over... 1,900 deaths. The day before that, there were over 1,600 deaths. Joe Biden wants to cooperate with the Trump task force to work on a plan to curb cases, save lives, and get a vaccine out to as many people as possible as quickly as possible. Instead, the president is refusing to concede and trying to stage an incompetent coup, and he's become a full J.D. Salinger-level recluse hiding out in the White House and skipping task force meetings on a deadly plague spreading rapidly throughout the country. We have not heard from the president on this. We haven't heard from him at all. He hasn't taken our questions in over two weeks. And so, you know, we haven't seen the president since on Friday. And the White House insists he's still working. He's still focused on coronavirus. But, Aaron, yeah. we should note the president hasn't attended a task force meeting in five months, even though they've had one held just in the last week. So if that gives you any idea, we're yeah. actually told by sources he's much more consumed by the state of this election and contesting the results than he is with the pandemic surging across the country. Of course he's more focused on the election he lost than on the pandemic. I know it was hard to tell from the hundreds of psychotic all-caps tweets, most of them with warning labels on them, which is insane. At this point, we 
have to put a disclaimer on the president's tweets like a pack of cigarettes or an episode of Jackass. I mean, think about that. The pandemic raging out of control, thousands of Americans dying a day, and the president hasn't even been to a meeting in five months. You realize how long that is? Five months ago, I was trapped in my in-law's house talking to a painting of a sea captain. Even then, I apparently was doing more work than the president of the United States because at least I was talking to someone. And then today, after a string of embarrassing court losses and bumbling performances in front of exasperated judges, Rudy Giuliani, voted America's wettest lawyer for three years running, held a marathon press conference slash performance art piece that was honestly at times so incomprehensible I thought I had to put on the closed captioning, and even when I did, the closed captioning said, your guess is as good as mine. It would be impossible and honestly pointless to wade through all the unintelligible bullshit because even if you were somehow steeped in the Fox News cinematic universe, following all the details of a deranged conspiracy theory like this can be exhausting. It's like keeping track of where every character is supposed to be during each Avengers movie. All I know is I'm pretty sure Joe Biden is old Captain America. Here's a sampling of just how psychotic this televised therapy session was. The only thing left is the vote. That could have been Mickey Mouse. That could have been a dead person. Did you all watch My Cousin Vinny? Did you know the movie? It's one of my favorite uh, law movies because he comes from Brooklyn. And uh, when the, the nice lady who said she saw, and then he, uh, he, he says to her, how many f fingers do I, how many fingers do I got up? A lot of people were coming over from Camden to vote. They do every year. Happens all the time in Philly. It's about as frequent as getting beaten up at a Philadelphia Eagle basketball, uh, football game. I assume if she's working, if she's working for the, I, mean, I assume if she's working for the city of Detroit, that she's a Democrat. We have witnesses who have actually reported. Where are you, FBI? We more than double the number of votes needed to overturn the election. There's nobody here that engages in fantasies. And how come nobody's looking at my pencils? I got all the pencils. <laughs> I'm sorry, nobody here engages in fantasies? You just did a lengthy reenactment of my cousin Vinny and called the Philadelphia Eagles a basketball team. Also, why is Rudy always wiping his entire face like he just got done doing CrossFit while eating a meatball sub? It's not great when the lawyer looks like he's about to admit to the crime. My client is innocent, Your Honor, because I'm the killer and I'd do it again. Also, he admitted they're trying to overturn the election. He actually used those words. It's like walking into a costume shop and saying, which mask is best for robbing a bank? And by the way, that's exactly what they're trying to do, and it's very real. And as incompetent as it is, it's still an assault on constitutional democracy. The president just invited Michigan lawmakers to come to the White House to pressure them to overturn the results in their state. Can we just call this an attempted coup now? Because that's what it is. We're all arguing over terminology, like whether it's champagne or sparkling wine, but it's a coup. It, even if it doesn't succeed because everyone involved is a moron, that doesn't make it any less horrifying. Even if this fails, historians will spend years studying this attempted coup and psychiatrists will spend years studying the use of Rudy Giuliani. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. We love you.